Chapter 8 If I follow your story, I said to Jean-Claude, you said you don't work for her. Not what I said. He looked over at Bridget, who sat on the mac and pretended indifference. Not that I do, I mean, work for this creature, but nobody asked me. You ask me, Monsieur, did I work for his mother? The kitten's mother is Fifi La Belle. And Fifi is who? She's my seventh cousin. And Fifi is where? I believe she's at home. It's like pulling hen's teeth, I said. Where's home? At the Beaumont nursery. At Beaumont farms. I looked up at Bridget, who looked at her nails. All right, I was fibbing, she said. It's just that the truth is so, well... Unbelievable, Sam. And I needed your help, and I thought... Well, I thought you'd believe I'm his mother. I didn't, I said. You didn't? I laughed. <laughs> Not once you got talking. You talked too much, and you couldn't describe his distinguishing marks. I never once met a genuine mother who couldn't recite every freckle and hair. But I'd swear you believed me. I chortled again. <laughs> I believed in your caviar, kid, and your locks. Now suppose you start talking, and try talking straight. She lowered her eyes and then swallowed some air. My roommate she said, is just as I told you, a Mr. O'Shaughnessy. Now she looked up. He's a kindly old gentleman, seventy-three, with a sweet disposition, a heart made of gold. Uh-huh, I said flatly. She gathered more wind. Well, the other morning he went for a walk and discovered this kitten, I mean on the street, I mean, someone abandoned it, poor little thing. Well, his heart just went out to it. Heart made of gold. And he carried it home with him. Bridget, he said, we must care for this kitten. Her voice had a throb, and her eyes filled with moisture. And that's what we did until yesterday evening. You see, he went out. I mean, Mr. O'Shaughnessy went to the market, and that's when the burglars came into the house. I nodded. The burglars. Yes, there were two. They came in through the doorway and burgled the kitten. Oh, Sam, I was frightened. I mean, I was just so entirely frightened, I hid in the tub. But you did get a look at them. Not very well. Like I said, I was hiding, but after they left, Sam, I ran to the window and watched them go off. They were driving a truck, Sam, and right on its side it said, Beaumont Gallery, Art and Antiques. She seemed to have finished. Jean-Claude looked amused. That's the version she tried when she came to the gallery. I didn't believe it then, and I still don't believe it now. So you work at the gallery, I said. He nodded. And when did Ms. Wonderful come with her tale? I came about nine or so, Bridget threw in. The kitten was kidnapped at 8.17. I looked at Jean-Claude again. Nine's about right. She came up to the window. And what happened then? Nothing, monsieur. I was there by myself. There was yet no kitten. So who brought him in? Alas, I was napping, monsieur. I don't know. 
but you saw Mr. Patter come in. Mr. Patter? The guy with the dart and the lousy cigar. Again, he nodded. I had to make use of a bottle of perfume to wash off the smell. Mr. B will be angry. Let's talk about P. Had you ever seen him before? Not at all. At least not till the moment he came through the window. He talked to Sebastian. He stood in the doorway and spoke with his pistol, monsieur. He said, bang. And then what happened? I happened to notice Sebastian's luggage was here on the floor, and I noticed a kitten, monsieur, a frightened little black kitten in one of the bags. And then what happened? And then I fled. He looked at the window, the fluttering snow. If Monsieur will excuse me, he started to rise. We've completed our business. I'd better get home before snow ever attacks me. You know where to reach me, Monsieur, if you like. By the way, Bridget offered, I noticed a rex in the tree by the gutter. You'd better watch out. A rex? he said, frowning. The rex, she said. She looked at the Frenchman and lifted a paw and engraved an elaborate G in the air. He nodded in silence. And speaking of G, I said, watching them closely, he sent me some thugs. I described the three gangsters and mentioned their names. Bridget looked startled. The Frenchman looked grim. He said quickly, Excuse me, and leapt to the window and then fled to the blizzard. I watched him depart and then looked back at Bridget. She lowered her eyes. Oh, for pity's sake, trust me, she sobbed with a quiver. I know I'm a liar. I know I've been wrong, but I need you so badly. She lifted her eyes. I'm so, so frightened and so, so alone. And you're so, so... Wonderful and brave, I said helpfully. Oh, yes, she said, yes. Will you help me? Will you please, please help me? The telephone rang. She sat like a stone while I clicked on the speaker. Hey, Sammy, it's Buster. Get over here fast. What's the matter? Can't talk. Just get over here pronto. The phone went to static and suddenly died. Bridget looked frightened. Sam? she said. Later, go back to Caboodle. I looked at the snow and then looked back at Bridget. You'd best stay the night. <laughs>